Hey folks, Dr. Sean Baker here again. Let's talk a little about seed oils, those infamous seed oils. Now, there's a lot of just back and forth about the healthfulness or the unhealthfulness of seed oils. They're poisonous, they cause obesity. If just looking at canola oil is gonna put you on a one-way ticket to being dead, to what extent is that true? How much of that is, is embellishment? Uh, how dangerous are these oils? And where, where can you find them? Let's talk about that. Okay, let's first talk about what are seed oils. Well, as the name implies, they're oils derived from seeds from different plants that have seeds. They have concentrated fats within the seeds. A lot of it is, like we mentioned before, omega-6 polyunsaturated fats. Uh, there is a combination of other fats in there often. They then go through a complicated process to concentrate the oil. Then it is further manipulated so that often it becomes oxidized and becomes rancid and has to be deodorized and decolorized and purified uh, before the final product is uh, eventually uh, provided for us to eat. Unfortunately, when these oils become oxidized, they become problematic for our body and in some cases can lead to inflammatory processes or at least there is some evidence that suggests that it does so. Again, chronically consuming this over time is going to add up. Now, if you have a little bit of it occasionally, is that going to be a big deal? Probably not. It's probably, like I said, the dose that makes the poison. But we have to be aware what, what's in there and, and not view them as super healthy, as some people will will maintain. All right, where, where might you find some of these seed oils? Well, sunflower oil, safflower oil, canola oil, soybean oil, corn oil, uh, rice bran oil, grapeseed oil, cottonseed oil, all those are seeds that have been hyper-concentrated and run through this process, which can sometimes leave them to be uh, fairly inflammatory. Okay, what are some of the dangers associated with seed oils? Well, as I mentioned, you know, if they become oxidized or, or the rancidity can definitely lead them to become inflammatory in our bodies for sure. And we're not really built to break that down. Again, you can argue all you want about what we're supposed to eat as humans and what we ate, but we have not been eating these oils for very long at all. I mean, at the most, they've been in the diet since about the late 1800s. And so prior to that, no human had ever consumed any significant quantity of seed oils like we do today. You know, it can be like putting the wrong fuel in your car. You know, your car can run on ethanol and diesel and uh, gasoline. If you start putting nails in there, <laughs> it's not gonna run so well after a while. You can think of it as just, you know, what are we designed to run on? And we're, we're not really designed, just processed foods in general. Our body's not really designed to uh, handle that stuff, at least over time. And we see what happens. We see the results with you know, all kinds of chronic diseases as we break down in different ways. Okay, I talked a little bit about, um, you know, some of the typical oils safflower oil, sunflower oil, and so on and forth. But what, where, where are seed oils found? Well, unfortunately, they're found in damn near everything. Almost all the processed food uh, has seed oils. And so you can find them in snack cakes and chips and crackers and salad dressings and mayonnaise and blondies and brownies and puddings and donuts and margarines, dips uh, like hummus, uh, a lot of pre-made, even meat products are, are often mixed in with uh, seed oils in there. So you have to be very careful. And of course, in a restaurant, they'll often use that to cook with. They're very cheap oils to cook with. Sometimes they reutilize the oils over and over again, which further draws the uh, inflammatory nature of those oils. Okay, so if you have seed oils one time, are you gonna die or something like that? Well, no, that's not gonna happen. So if you go to a restaurant and they cook your steak in some oil, for most people, it's probably not that big deal, unless you're eating out every single night, which most of us don't have the luxury of doing that. You know, and in fact, it may make your, you know, your life a little bit more manual if you can go out to eat steak and not freak out about just a small amount and you can spend time with your family, it might ultimately be you know, healthier for you to, to spend that social time with friends and, and loved ones around you. So I wouldn't be terrified about you know, a molecule of seed oil, but uh, you know, certainly if it becomes a significant part of your diet, as it is for the average American, it becomes very problematic. We discussed what seed oils are, where you might find them. Let's talk about a little bit more about some myths around seed oils. And so number one is they are inherently healthy. We see people like Walter Willett at Harvard University talking about how seed oils can lower LDL cholesterol and if you substitute uh, you know, polyunsaturated fats for sat saturated fats or vice versa, you'll lower some of the cardiovascular risk markers. Uh, and that is really considered the main benefit of these oils in many cases. But there's a lot that goes into that. And there's a lot of problems with, with that type of research. You know, there was a study in the BMJ which looked at that and they showed that increasing omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids to 15% of the diet was actually 
associated with an increase, not a decrease, but an increase in cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality compared to controls as seen in this particular chart here. And so what you can see is that, you know, the red line is a control group and the blue lines are the intervention outcomes. The control group had better outcomes than the intervention group, which was the CEDAW group. So again, there, there are a lot of studies around this topic. This is one that, that shows you that uh, CEDAWs can be problematic. Okay, a lot of people say, well, you know, omega-6 fats are actually essential and CEDAWs are a great place to get them and therefore we should eat these oils to obtain our nutritional requirements from this. Problem with that is that there are other just tremendously great places to get the essential omega-6 fats that are, that are uh, required in our diet. And so obviously fatty fish, things like that, but you can get them in meat. You can get them from tallow. You can get them from lard. You can get it from avocados, coconut oil, olive oil, and butter. You get ample amounts of enough omega-6 that you don't need to resort to adding seed oils to your diet. Okay, last, you know, last thing I said, seed oils are out to get you. You should never go to a restaurant again. Once again, this is something that uh, there are some people that are just hyper fearful of seed oils. I think like anything, you should sort of think about this on a spectrum of harm. Uh, it's probably not the worst thing you can possibly have, particularly in small amounts. But then again, you you know, if it becomes a habit and an everyday thing, then that's where the problem comes. So I wouldn't worry about going out to the restaurant occasionally and, and freaking about how they cook their food unless you have a severe sensitivity to it or you're trying to heal an autoimmune disease or a gut issue like an inflammatory bowel disease where those things may become more of a problem. So there is some level of tolerance here, but it's not very much. So keep it to a minimum, but don't, you know, trying to make it zero all the time can make life really, really challenging. Okay, so there you have it, a little basic rundown on some seed oils, my thoughts on that. So hopefully this has been helpful for you on your health journey. We'll be back with plenty more information coming up. Uh, if you can, go ahead and like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell, and try to share this with some of your friends that might benefit from this. All right, guys, we'll talk to you next time.